For decades, Florida has been plagued by harmful algae blooms, and their impacts have been felt year after year. Fish, sea turtles, and even whales have been dying. Property values are decreasing, and tourism? Well, let's just say this month alone, Sanibel, a popular tourist destination, has reported a 70% drop in hotel bookings from last year. The economy is suffering, ecosystems are dying, the people of Fort Myers and beyond are upset, and we? We have finally found a solution. Say hello to Project Blue. Project Blue is an initiative launched by AXI International, a local engineering and manufacturing firm, not too far from the contaminated Clusahatchee River and the once beautiful beaches of this great state. Formerly known as AlgaeX, the company specializes in fluid management, more specifically, diesel. But in the light of recent events, AXI has extended its arm into a different area, water. For those of you not familiar with the algae problem, Florida has been plagued by not one, but two harmful algae blooms. One in the salt water, known as red tide, and the other one originating from the fresh waters of Lake Okeechobee, also known as blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. To get a grasp on exactly what's happening, you must first head to the center of the state. Fertilizer is used in farming, and manure from livestock have contaminated the grounds they inhabit with nitrogen and phosphorus. During the summer rainy season, these nutrients flow into Lake Okeechobee, uh, thus turning the lake into a perfect breeding ground for toxic algae. Now you might be asking yourself, how does this affect the coast? And well, at first it doesn't, uh, until it does. You see, water levels at the lake tend to reach critical levels in the summer. And to prevent flooding from the surrounding communities and farmland, the excess water is sent down two rivers. You have the Clusahatchee to the west and the St. Lucie to the east. With that water comes loads of toxic algae that's already proliferated in the lake. In just two to three days, the algae reaches the estuary where their cells literally burst due to the salt content in the water. With the depth of these algae cells, a toxin known as microcystin is released. The surface of the water becomes covered in this unsightly and smelly vats of green, and the aquatic plants below, well, they lose their precious sunlight they use to produce oxygen for the surrounding sea life. With a decrease in dissolved oxygen and an increase in toxins, it's only a matter of time before you begin to see things die. And to make matters worse, the nutrients consumed by the freshwater algae happens to be the very same nutrients red tide feeds off of. So when the blue-green algae dies, the nutrients is released back into the water where they can fuel the saltwater toxic algae. So think for a second. What if you could allow the necessary water releases from Lake Okeechobee while also preventing the toxic algae from coming with it? This is the basis of our solution. You see, the toxic blue-green algae dies differently in the lake than it does in the estuaries. This is mainly due to there being no salt in the water. Toxicity levels in the lake, even during harmful blooms, tend to be well within the standards of recreational exposure. And when the releases happen, it has little to no effect on reducing the amount of toxic algae in the land-laked ocean we call Lake O. To understand our solution, you must understand how blue-green algae succeeds. During the winter, these cells are in the benthic phase, which means they're primarily in the bottom sediment of the lake. Come summer, these cells rise into the planktonic phase, where they move up and down the water column to get sunlight at the top and nutrients deeper down. This buoyancy behavior is key to isolating them from the rest of the water. With sonic buoys and a deep water bypass, it's possible to filter out the algae from ever entering the rivers. Sonic buoys are existing technologies. Uh, they make use of sonic waves to disrupt the buoyancy of the algae, and as a result, the algae cells are suspended in the water column, where they cannot get sunlight from the top or nutrients from the bottom. Eventually, they die, safely sinking to the bottom of the lake with their cell walls intact. No toxins are released, and 70 to 90 percent of the algae is killed. Having the buoys line waterways leading up to lock and dams will prevent most of the algae from ever reaching the point where they can enter the river. This brings us to a final point in filtration a deep water bypass. Essentially, large tubes would be installed below the dam, each equipped with culverts for drawing water deeper in the water column. So instead of waiting for water levels to reach a critical height, you would gradually release the water during peak sunlight hours between 10 and 2, when the surviving algae would be residing more towards the surface of the water. As a result, you'd be sending algae-free water to the coast, thus mitigating damage to our estuaries, economy, and people of Southwest Florida.
I'm E.J. Neepsey, data scientist with AXI International. I have half a decade of experience monitoring the health and rest doing restoration of coastal resources and ecosystems here in Southwest Florida. So I know the importance water quality has for our economy, our environment, and our culture. To support Project Blue, please share this video with your family, friends, and coworkers. Let's stop waiting for broken promises, come together as a community, and finally, save our waters. Thank you.